Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's training, today's new agent training. Hope you can hear me okay and well. Uh, I've got some great people on the line here today. We've got uh, May the 6th, 2022, and uh, I'm super excited, super optimistic. Just got back from Salt Lake City, Utah uh, last week. I'll show you my background here, so don't laugh at my background. I've got a background here, and this is a picture I took uh, while I was there. So you can see that right there uh, and see me on the background. That is the office right there. And one of the offices, there's two of them. And that's Salt Lake City, Utah. So came back from there and this video makes my hair look a little crazy and funny, but, uh, or the background does. But um, anyways, uh, super excited uh, to be here with everyone this morning. We've got a good group um, in this morning and a small enough group. What I want to do today, again, let me back up a little bit more. For those of the brand new people on the line, my name is Keelan Johnson. I'm the market manager for Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Kansas, Colorado. So primarily, though, Texas. Uh, so primarily the, the monstrous great state of Texas. So I'm excited about that. Um, been in the insurance business for 22 years. I cut my teeth early with a company called Pennsylvania Life, and uh, we were doing some long-term disability and life insurance self-employed contractors. So I would go out every day and get in my truck and drive around and see people, uh, plumbers, roofers, electricians, barbers, anybody that was self-employed, they may have the chance of injuring themselves that needed probably some disability insurance if they were to become un unable to do their job. And then life insurance. And then uh, I uh, had my own farmer's insurance agency for, for eight years. And then the assistant district manager for farmers uh, and an independent agent, uh, and then now since 2016 as the manager for the final expense division for Security National Life. So for those of y'all that don't know Security National Life, we are an umbrella of companies. Actually, uh, and, uh, we are the company, but we have several divisions in our company, which is us, a pre division, a mortgage division, and then an assets division. So we are the final expense. We bring in the money for the, for the company premiums. The premiums are taken into the company and invested, and that's how we uh, have structured it. Uh, the, the cool thing about it is with, this, with Security National is, is that the way we invest our money internally uh, is very, very stable, and uh, we've just passed the one and a half billion dollar mark and uh, had the last two best quarters in company history. So what you're going to find in the insurance industry as COVID continues is regulations are going to have to be higher reserves and right now in the low interest rate market it's hard for life insurance companies because when you bring in your premium you have to be able to make money on your premium because you're you're paying out your money in commissions you're paying out money in uh claims and how we do business so uh, it's very important to watch that but we are super stable super excited about security national life and the company so I want to do this this morning. I want to jump in here and start by asking or offering anybody that's on the line. I've got two different ways to do this, if you would like. I see some tenured people online here, and then I see some brand new people. So if you have any specific questions or specific issues, specific concerns, or specific topics that you want me to cover this morning, uh, go ahead and type it in your chat box if you can. So I'm going to put type here because uh, I am I have a chat box here. Now, also, if you don't and you can't find your chat box, we have a small enough group here. You're welcome to unmute yourself and, and just let me know what topic, anything specific you want to cover. Because a lot of times, you know, what you want to hear and what you want to know can be the same as others on the line. So I'm going to give it about two minutes, and uh, if you would like, I want to give you the opportunity to type in or unmute yourself and ask any specific question that you would like for me to cover today, because I want to make sure that I am open to your questions. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy, because you're, typically your question is maybe one that somebody else might have. So I'm going to give it about two minutes. Unmute yourself or type in your question and uh, within within two minutes. So on your mark, set, go.
All right, give about a one more minute. I see one question here. Any other questions? Unmute or text your question. Don't be shy. All right, so we've got a couple of questions here, a couple of starting points. Again, along the way, if any of you have questions, feel free to text it or unmute yourself, and we will, uh, or I will get that that asked and answered. Uh, so if people don't, if people don't give them with their premium for their premiums, would go up. Okay, that's a good question. So medications and premiums, and so we've got enrollment process. We've got pre-qualifying someone and medications. Good, good, good. Well, that gives us a starting point. Gives us a starting point. First of all, um, type in the box yes if you can hear me. So if you can hear me loud and clear, please type in the word yes in the box here, um, or you can, I'm perfect. Thank you, Albert. Um, so let's, let's just talk for a second here. Number one, for brand new people up here at the top, you see my training website. I'm gonna be referencing this all morning long, uh, because this is the training website that I built, and this is how I can train the best. So I want you to have it too. So uh, this is your tools also. It's not just for training, it's your tools, ongoing tools, and I'm gonna show you how and why um, throughout this, uh, this talk. But final expense life up here at the top. So if you see the URL or see the website, final expense life, dot us you can see that at the top okay write that down or copy it or put it in your phone uh put it on your phone i i think you should have it on your phone and i'll show you why also you can really reference these things and go back and forth because when you're out in the field it's about sense of urgency and you need to be able to create that sense of urgency by being able to pull something up and work on it and look at it okay so finally, expenselife.us here, okay? So, so the questions that, that, that came along is, is this, is that if someone doesn't wanna give you the medicines, will their rate go up? And also how to pre-qualify someone. So let's talk really about just starting here. I'm gonna go down to my tools and let's talk about this right here. Tools for you, our products. So our products here, or your products, basically, you know, here look was, look a little bit like this. But basically, we are going to be talking, and then most of the time, what anything we write is going to be your simple security plan, and that's ages 40 to 90 over here. Okay, so ages 40 to 90. So most of our market is going to be running across people in the ages of 40 to 90. Okay, because that is the senior market. And Simple Security Plan is the best product for that. The Simple Security Plan is the best product for that. That's the best priced. That's the best coverage. And that's also the one you're going to get the com most commission on because it is the best price and because it is our newer product. So you're going to see this Simple Security Plan is where you go for anybody over the age of 40 unless they have some height and weight issues and i'll get into that also the second plan that we have is the security care plan just think of this only using this if you're going to be writing someone ages zero to 40. Okay, so just think about that zero to 40 put your eyeballs on that and that's what you're going to be using one on people zero to 40. we then have our mib plan which is monthly increasing benefit plan you'll see that plan there also um, and that's going to be for people that are unhealthier, maybe people that have um, the dialysis, people that have Alzheimer's, some people that have dementia of those things. OK, so MIB, monthly increasing benefit. 
And then you see at the bottom, we have our eye care plan. That's going to be for the younger people, ages 25 to 55 or so. Uh, face amounts, 25000 And it actually only goes now. So this really right here is no longer useful. It actually goes to 30000 So what would that person look like? A healthy mom, a healthy dad, uh, or individual. It doesn't have to be a parent. Okay. And you're going to go from face amounts of 25 to 30,000 down here. Okay. On the, on the eye care plan. So just think about that, kind of wrap your brain around that. We've got our simple up top. That's what you're going to hear me preach and teach and talk about most of the time, uh, because that's the one we're going to use for people 40 to 90. That is when we talk about process. Now let's just jump back into the simple security plan. Okay. So with the simple security plan, uh, also, if you look at the rate book, and here's a couple of cool things here uh, in PDF format. So on this second one right here, this simple security plan, you're going to see this. And I want to go through the bullet points here. So for our simple security plan, we go from ages 40 to 90. We go all the way up to 35,000. We have day one coverage on our preferred and our standard, okay? So day one coverage on preferred and standard. Raise this up a little bit. When you're doing a paper application, there is no telephone interview, okay? So that's nice for a lot of people. We check prescriptions only. So all we're doing is just show me your medicines. We wanna see your medicine and that's it. We have super competitive rates, no doubt about that. We have an accidental death rider, which means if you have 10 or 15, $20,000 worth of coverage, we can give you an accidental death, which means that will, that will double it. Uh, so if you have a policy and you want to double it just in case they have an accident, then it would double your policy. So you would see 15 go to 30. Okay. So I'll show you where in the, where in the application we can do that also. All right. For the accidental death child rider. If you're if you have children under the age of 18, under the age of 18, we can even put children on a policy, children from a $10,000 standpoint, okay, and cover the children at a very very reasonable price, okay, under the age of 18. All diabetic classes, case we take all clients with diabetes. So I'll show you that also. A paper, simple two-page paper application. 24 hour underwriting. So when you get a policy in before 11 o'clock today, we underwrite that policy, write it, and you have coverage the, the next day. Okay, so it's super quick, super fast, 24 hour underwriting. You choose your draft date. Okay, so you get to determine when you want the draft date to be. Do you want the draft date to be on the 5th or 4th or 10th or 15th or 20th? Level premiums, level premiums. Our premiums never go up. I'm going to show you an illustration on my policy because I wanted to really, really be able to see how strong we are, how strong the policies are, and how strong the back end of it is. You know, I talk about two policies a month on a minimum goal, and I really do believe that. I believe that if you really know how good this policy is for anybody, kids, people, young people, 40, 50, 60, 80, okay, anybody, because it doesn't just cater to one specific group. This is a whole life policy. It gains cash value. It grows and people will have it forever because I don't care if you're 10 or you're 110, we're all going to die one day. And we just don't know when it's going to be. But we ought to make sure everybody has protection when that day comes because it's not up to us. Okay. So we have to make sure that the family is taken care of, which is very important. But level premiums help that. You've got other policies and other carriers that have maybe term policies or IUL policies or whatever it may be. And those premiums can go up. Those premiums can go up depending on what the need of the policy is. So just let it, know, let it be known that the whole life policy and final expense never goes up. Level death benefits. So we've got face amounts of, uh, you know, 10,000, 15, 20,000, and they stay the same. They stay the same all the way throughout. We can never cancel your benefits. As long as you're paying the premium, we can never cancel it. And it gathers cash, cash accumulation. So our policies gather cash. They grow. You have value in it all the way through the policy period. Okay. 
So this is just a little PDF. If you want to be able to give this to some of your clients, you want to email, you know, somebody says, hey, can you email me something? This is a very good outline of what our policy does, what our policy is. And it's right there underneath this tab of, we have it in English and have it in Spanish. Okay, English and Spanish right here. All right. So when we jump down here to the rate book, this is going to answer some questions for you. Um, everybody should get a rate book and everybody will have access to a rate book within your agent portal. But if you look at this right here on our simple security plan, okay? So we have three levels of coverage. We have our preferred, which is day one coverage, okay? Immediate coverage from day one. We have our standard, okay? Which is right here. And this is also day one coverage. And then we have our modified. And basically what modified is, is try not to say the word wait. Try not to say waiting period because it's not a waiting period. And uh, I mean, it is essentially kind of a waiting period. Waiting, you, you have to wait till you get full face amount. But when you say wait to clients, it really turns them off. Plus, here's the thing. If they have to go modified with us, they're going to go modified with a lot of people. Okay, so they're pretty, they're pretty familiar with that. But if something were to happen in the first two years from a natural cause, like heart attacks or COPD or brain or uh, you know, anything of uh, uh, lungs or, or diabetes, then we would give the client beneficiary all the money back. So provides coverage equal to the premiums paid plus 10%, plus 10% for the first two years. After the two years, 100% of the face amount is taken care of. So after two years, you can, and then on the 25th month, you can have full coverage. Also be aware um, that you've got preferred. So preferred, you see these age limits right here. We can go up to 35,000 on preferred people under the age of 75. Okay, 76 to 80 is 15 and 81 to 90 is 10. All right. And then you have these age bands right here also. You have these age bands also right here. And that's on standard, okay? Right here, this is modified, okay? So you've got modified right here. Age is 40 to 75, 76 to 80, and 81 to 85, okay? So here are the age bands for that. Uh, looking at it, depending on how old they are, they can go all the way up to 90 here. Okay, but they can go up to 85 if they're a modified. Okay, so just be aware you see that, so that you know, because I get a lot of answers sometimes. Oh, how much can we write this person or how much? Well, it's in your rate guide right there under the simple security plan. All right, see if there's any questions on that. So we're doing good. On the security care plan, which is the next one down, and I'll show you why we would use that in a case or two. But on that, it looks a little different. Basically, on this security care plan, you have the select, you have the special, and then you have the limited. Okay, so you have day one coverage right here, and then over here, you have <coughs> sorry, 25, 50, 75. Okay, so three levels uh, maximum face amount, minimum face amount on those. The MIB plan is a little bit different, it's a growing plan, it's on the actual last page of your um, underwriting guide here. And basically, we're going to be writing people. And again, think about this like this. Think about it, somebody on dialysis, dementia, Alzheimer's, somebody that can't get a day one coverage, but they still want to get a plan. They still want to accumulate money. They still want money to be there when they pass away. So let's just take, let's just say we've got a person over here that's in this age group, 55 to 64. Let's say they've got a $9,000 policy or they want a $9,000 policy. They're going to pay $60 a month for 10 years. $60 a month for 10 years, okay? Now, what does that look like? So they will come in here and pay the $60 a month right here every month, okay, to their premium. And then we will, Security National Life, pay 25%. So you see that word bump up there? We will pay 25% additional money, which actually ends up being $15 a month. So their total... $75 a month in premium, okay? So they get $75 a month. So they accumulate it, they accumulate that premium into a bucket. 
accumulated into a bucket, okay? And when they put that money in the bucket, it grows and it grows and it grows. And then if they ever need it or when they need it, then they would get that money. Now, if they pay for it for 10 years, it will be paid up. It'll be completely paid up in 10 years. So we got a paid up policy in 10 years and uh, of $9,000 and they don't have to pay any more premiums and go on. Okay. It's still a good plan for people that can't get the day one coverages or even the modifies because this is you're paying for it on a 10 year period. But the interest rates are good. 25, 42.8%, 11% interest rate and 2.5. So we're growing money. Now, if they were to pass away in an accident, they were to have an accident and die, they would get full face amount. Okay, so full face amount on accidents. Okay, so just kind of a little flyby of the rate book and what it looks like and how to use it, okay, on the MIB plan and the simple security plan. Height and weight, uh, you know, when you're talking about qualifying, I think Colton, you said about how to qualify. Um, you know, look at this height and weight chart is one thing we need to be, you know, really aware of on the height and weight chart. Okay, so when you look at this height and weight chart, let me see if I can zoom it in a little bit more. Uh, here we go. Someone that is 5'8", we can write a policy for them up to 262 pounds and still get preferred or standard. Still get preferred or standard. So you got 262. For graded or modified, then you go up to 280. 280. Now, if they're 50 years old and they weigh 300 pounds, and we can't get them a simple security plan because they weigh too much. But we can go over here and get a security care plan, security care plan, okay? And at 5'8", they can go up to 355 pounds, up to 355, okay? And get them a limited, the $10,000 limited. After that, over 355, then we jump into the MIB plan. So we jump in the MIB plan. So there's really not anyone we can't write. There's not anyone we can't write due to height and weight because it just matters if you're in the simple, if you're in the security care, or if you're with the MIB. But just want to provide that little tool there, uh, this rate chart, so that you can get to it quickly. This is another reason why you need it on your phone so that you can access it quickly in case you get into a situation where you think, you know, and really what I ask people, I say, hey, you know, when I pre-qualify them, I say, hey, listen, say, is there any medicines? Tell me about your medicines you're on. Tell me about your medicines you're on. And then how's, how or how is, how is your height and weight? How is your height and weight? Tell me what medicines you're on. How's your height and weight? Okay. How's your height and weight? And they'll tell you, well, I'm 5'8 and such and such. or 5'10 and such and such. Okay. So I, that's how I pose the question. though. <clears throat> Medications list. So it's right here. So all this is right here together. When you get medications, you're going to be able to hear and, and, and look them up. One cool thing about, I like it on my computer here. I don't know if yours does it. And also your iPhones will do it. Yeah, they have a search option too. When you bring this up, you can hit the arrow at the bottom and uh, you can look a search and it will search up words or search up, uh, you know, medications. But right here, I can go in like on this search up here on the left top list. I can hit find and a little box will pop up. And I can type in amlodipine, okay? And it'll start coming up. Look, it highlighted it right there. So I found it. Oh, look here, amlodipine. All right, so basically, if they are on six high blood pressure pills, or let me say five. If they're on five high blood pressure pills, we can still get them a preferred policy. Once they go to their sixth, once they go to their sixth, when we're going modify, okay? And we're going modify. Uh, and then also if they got angina, which is, uh, angina, which is, you know, a heart disease, we would go modify, but play around here in these medications and everything. Go ahead and look in these medications. Cause this is again, how we, how we rate stuff. This is how we rate stuff. You can go through here and the more you're knowledgeable, the more you're knowledgeable about what we take and what we don't, the more confident you're going to be out in the field. And then the more the, you know, the more the client sees that and they feel confident in you that you know the product. Because here's the thing. They want to trust you. They want to believe you. But they also want to, to know that you know what you're talking about. Right? They want to know you know what you're talking about. So this is a way to do it. Be very, very uh, knowledgeable about where to find this stuff. 
and you'll get you'll get used to this. So don't think right off the bat it's frustrating because oh my gosh, look at all these medicines. I will never learn these medicines. Well, hey, I don't either. I don't know them either, but I know where to find them. And as I get more tenured in the business, I know, oh yeah, high blood pressure is a preferred. Oh yeah, cholesterol is a preferred. Okay, so that's how to look at this. I'm gonna go down and draw a few stick figures that may make sense a little bit later uh, in the, if I can find some blank area, there we go right here. So I wanna talk about a little bit of underwriting here, just kind of give you a, a, a high end overview of what we are looking at uh, as far as the simple security plan. So if you have a, a person, this is a stick figure over here, not very good, but anyways, this is my stick figure. I'm gonna do three stick figures. And you may want to, you know, do this also or take notes or whatever. This is how basically in a summary, in a, in a child's view, how we determine who goes where, how we determine who goes where. So I'm going to add a little writing up here at the top. This is going to be our preferred, preferred person, preferred Paul. Okay, this is going to be our standard Steve, and this is going to be our modified Mo. Okay. So I've got three people here. We've got Paul, Steve, and Mo. Okay. Let's look, kind of give some examples of what maybe Paul would have as a preferred person. Okay. So Paul has high blood pressure. He'd be preferred. Paul has hot cholesterol. He would be preferred. Paul has uh, takes thyroid medicine. He'd be preferred. Hi, uh, Paul has ADD or uh, minor uh, depression. Preferred. Paul is on metformin for diabetes. Paul would be preferred. Okay. So we got high blood pressures are preferred. Cholesterols are okay. Thyroids are okay. Depression, ADD is fine, metformin, okay, diabetes is fine. And we could go through here and actually look through our medications guide and find all the preferred stuff. Oh, there's another one. There's asthma is preferred. Okay, so we could add preferred to asthma over here. Depression preferred, panic disorder preferred, asthma again, uh, fibromyalgia preferred, bipolar preferred, uh, rheumatoid arthritis preferred. Okay. So this is how you kind of do it. I got my stick figure down here and I know who's going preferred. Okay. So preferred Paul right here has all these things going for him. Steve, standard Steve. The only time we're going to have a standard Steve in here is if Steve is taking insulin for diabetes less than 100 units a day. Okay. So that's all that Steve would have right here. Now, remember both Paul and Steven are what? They're both day one coverage. Day one coverage, remember for preferred and standard. All right, modified Mo over here is gonna be the rest of the stuff. So if you look up here and you see modified, there's quite a bit. Schizophrenia, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, Parkinson's, okay, several things up here. Schizophrenia is, is modified mode. Blood thinners, or most of the blood thinners. Okay, so you see, I can't write them all down. I can't write them all down, but when you look at these three people, that's how to kind of determine, oh yeah, but when you're out in the, in the mall or out in the, if they have malls anymore, if you're out in the public and you're looking around, you know, uh, uh, Okay, Paul, one second. Four foot tall. How do I do height and weight? Okay. If you're out in the public and you're talking to them, then you need to kind of have an idea. Oh, yeah, listen, you're, you know, you've got, uh, you've just got high blood pressure. Okay, good. Well, you're going to be over here. Okay. You've got cholesterol. Oh, good. You'd be preferred. Oh, I've got thyroid. Oh, you'd be preferred. Oh, I've got uh, uh, metformin for diabetes. Oh, you'd be preferred. Okay. So know that. And know that we take people because here's the thing. It's very important. It's not what we do take. It's who can we write. So if you look at this one right here, 
This is very encouraging as to who we can cover. And this is available to you in a printout. So you could print this out. But these are things that we do take. So again, a lot of these things are going to be modified mo. Okay, diabetes, angioplasty, stents, bypass, heart valve, pacemaker, cancer, heart disease, heart attack, enlarged heart, circulatory, lung, emphysema, kidney, neuropathy. Well, I want to just pause for a second because when you go out in public, a lot of times until, until you come into a company like us or a final expense company or a final expense carrier like we are, if you're just used to the standard insurance market out there, with you know some of them, the you know the headliners, the standard players, a lot of them don't take this. A lot of them don't take these risks. Um, so a lot of people have been declined, and so the client thinks, "Oh my gosh, I'm going to be declined too because, oh, I've got uh, you know uh, I've got lupus. Well, no, we can actually write that. Oh, I've had neuropathy. Oh no, we can actually write that. Okay." So just look at this and make sure that you have your confidence built and know where to find it, that now you're with the company or now you are with a company that will take a lot of this stuff. So when you're out in the public, don't feel shy about handing your business card out because you might get declined or they might get declined because we take a heck of a lot of things, okay? Because we take a heck of a lot of things. But just know how to, to look at this medication guide and, and determine whether they're a Paul preferred whether they're standard Steve or a modified Mo, okay, or a modified Mo, those three things, and how to put them into play there based on their height and weight and based on what they're taking, all right? So maybe that kind of gives a little bit of a, an idea to, to I think, uh, Colton on the pre-qualifying someone a little bit um, and, and medications. Now, the other question that I believe that was posed uh, back here uh, by Roni, uh, is this, is that people don't want to give, the, if they don't give their medications, will the premium go up? Well, here's the answer to the question. If someone tells you they're not taking any medicine and you're assuming they're a preferred Paul and you're assuming they're a preferred Paul and then we send the application in and uh-oh, guess what? There's a medication that came in for Zyprexa. Okay, and they were telling you everything is okay. And now you got a, medi a medicine that came in that we found for schizophrenia. Uh-oh, they're modified Mo now. So the answer to your question, uh, Ronnie, is, is that it, the more information that they tell you and the more you can as an agent go in and go, hey, tell me the truth about what you're taking because... We're going to find it anyways, so you might as well be up front. That way we can get the rate correct and we can find the right coverage for you. So it's very important there. On cancers right here, so you see this right here, cancer 90 days decline. So here's the deal. If someone has been cancer free for 90 days or more, guess what they can be? They can be a modified mo. Cancer free 90 plus days. Watch this. If we go into here and they've been cancer free for what? Cancer free right here for two years? Preferred. Preferred. Okay. So they go over here into our preferred Paul. So preferred Paul comes in here and preferred Paul has been cancer free two plus years, All right? Barring there's no other issues. Oh, All right, so maybe that gives you an idea how to read the medications guide and how to put them into a place of uh, Paul, Steve, and Mo. It's actually the first time I've done this illustration ever. <laughs> I just, uh, it, something came to my mind about, you know, I mean, I've done the three people, but I've never named them Paul, Steve, and Mo, but I think I'm gonna stick with it. I, I kind of like it, and so, uh, Anyways, hopefully I can create a PDF that will that will constantly we can use that way to help you build confidence when you're when you're out there is just to figure out where to put people. OK, so we have height and weight. Remember, height and weight determines where we put people. And then we have the medications that determine where we put people. And this also is, is shown again and illustrated on the application. And I'll show you how to how to do that. one. OK, how to do that. 
All right, so the medications list, it's right there in front of you. Get used to looking at it or get used to having it in front of you. Okay, get used to using it or having it in front of you. Let's see a two messages. Okay. Oh, cool, all right. So four foot tall and height and weight. So let's go back to the height and weight chart. Uh, so if they're four foot tall, um, they were probably gonna be, you know, be fine. Uh, if they, they, they would fall into the same guidelines, four foot tall, as long as they're under 200 pounds and four foot were good for preferred or standard, as long as they're under 223 for four foot 10, we're gonna be good, okay? A little inside secret for everybody, but don't say anything now, but just some optimism for the future. We have uh, some new guidelines, underwriting guidelines coming out at the end of the year, and you're gonna be very happy with them. Very happy with them. We've got some very, very good ones coming out at the end of the year to help us in the marketplace with several things. And you're gonna really like it. It's gonna open the doors for you a little bit more uh, on the height and weight and some other areas. So optimism for the end of the year. Again, the company says that, we don't know. Everybody has a company, if you know what I mean. So it could be one year, it could be 10 years, it could be two, but there's optimism and they're working at the home office to help you out and us out. So that's good news. I just put these other things in here. I want you to kind of want to skim top, of top of them and then I want to get into an application for everybody that's new here. But look at these other things here. Uh, ask for referrals, okay? Ask for referrals here. Very important, very important that we ask for referrals at the end of the sale. Did that make you feel comfortable? This is a very good sheet to carry with you on every sale at every appointment. You know, you got to ask the people, did I make you feel comfortable? Are you happy with the protection I gave to you? Did I answer all your questions? And then would you recommend me? This is basically saying, hey, Paul, how'd I do? Are you comfortable? Did I answer all the questions? Are you going to keep your policy? Are you going to make sure that we have this policy forever? Uh, do you feel good about it? Are you happy with me? Okay, very good underlying questions and simple for people to read. And at that, write some names down. I, I want to do business with people just like you. I want to do business with people just like you. And I want to make sure that I protect people just like you. Because, you know, here's the thing about it. And I say it every time. Okay, it's not a matter on final expense. It's not a matter of if you have the policy, if there's coverage. Okay, if you run into a house and you, you know, if your house burns down, if something happens, no, it's not that. Our business is not ifs. Our business is not if something happens. Our business is when it happens, when you pass away, when this happens, when that day comes, we want the policies to be there. So you know what? I love relationships and I want people just like you in this business, okay? Do you mind giving me some names and numbers of people that I can call, I can go talk to, because I'd love to protect them too. I want them in my book of business. I want to be the one at the end of the day that when the funeral comes along, and this is a funeral home, and this is the casket right here, I want to be the one sitting on the front pew waiting to hug that family's neck because I gave them a policy, and they had a policy with me. Okay, I want to be the one to do that. I don't want to be the one on the back pew back here that runs away and says, we'll see you later because I'm scared to death for them to ask me if Mr. Jones had a policy because he didn't and I didn't do my job correctly. I wanna be the happy one up here because there was a policy. Hope that sinks into you. Hope it sinks into you that you're with a company, you're in an opportunity, you're with a, uh, you know, a career, you're, you, you have something in your hands that you can provide to every single person you know, every single person you meet, every single pe person you love that's gonna be used one day and it's gonna be and it's gonna be used one day, or it's not gonna be used because you were too scared, too afraid, too worried to ask somebody, are you covered? Are you protected? Are you, I mean, do you have a policy? Do everybody does everybody on the line here have a policy for themselves? Okay, because I've we have lost five, five agents in the last three years to COVID. Three of them did not have a policy for themselves through us. And you get paid full commissions on it. Okay. So hint, hint, easy way for you new agents to get $250 worth of lead credit in your shirt. Write a policy on yourself, protect yourself. You get full, you get full commissions on it, okay? And you get the lead credit. And not only that, you've protected yourself. 
All right, I got off on a little tangent. I tell you, I get passionate sometimes, so don't don't uh, take it personally. I just get passionate because I just don't understand when agents don't write policies when they see people because they they need protection, they need coverage, they need policies, and and that's what we do. That's kind of like saying, hey, I'm a doctor out there and I've got you know uh, free band aids here. Would you like some? And you say, no, I don't use band aids. Yeah, you are. You're going to use them one day. You're going you're going to have a cut. You're going to have a bruise. You're going to have a sore. You're going to have something. You you're always going to use one. Here, take it. So. You know, that's a bad analogy, but now it is. It's true. So I'm off on a tangent. So referral form, referral form, take them, print them, and use them. Okay. A new appointment setting right here. Uh, I believe uh, I had someone ask me about this uh, yesterday or day before on some some scripts. Okay. So here are some scripts that we have in here. Common objections that you can that you you're going to run across. Things you might want to read up on. So these are good on objections. Here's a voicemail script. Okay, so hi, hi, Bill. This is Keelan Johnson. I'm getting back with you about your request for the new information. I'm the local field rep in your area. Please give me a quick call to set a time for delivery. Okay, uh, thanks, Bill. And again, it's Keelan Johnson. My number is 512. This, uh, that, this number again is blocked. Text, hey, Bill, it's Keelan Johnson. I'm getting back to you about your request for new information. I'm local field rep in your area. And when should I drop off this information, morning or evening? Email, okay? So these are some bonus tips. Summary for setting appointments here. Door knocking script, okay? Start by waving, come to the door. Door knocking script. My name is Keelan Johnson. I know you weren't expecting me, but I'm getting back with you and request for blah, blah, blah from the state approved final expense. I'm the local rep and we're in the company approved in the state. I was in a neighborhood, so I figured I would drop off information and answer the questions. Where's a good place to sit down and go over it? Can you just give me the information? I'd love to, but it's my job. I don't have time right now. I know we're all busy. I don't remember requesting it. I understand. So you acknowledge it and then you return. This is great. Okay, so look at those summary for door knocking scripts. Here's some, you know, some good things. So if you need a little sharpening on your brand new, read these right here. Read this stuff and then get with me and we can go over it and go through it. I'd love to work with you one-on-one -on, -one on going out and, and working in the field because uh, that's what I do. Okay. But just remember, even right now, if you didn't learn another thing, you know 98% more than anybody at their house right now anyways. So don't be scared. You already know 98% more than anybody else you talk to. So just practice and talk to them. Just tell them, hey, I'm, you know, I'm new with the final expense, but that doesn't mean that the industry is new. We still have done it for years and years and years, and we love to protect people. How can I help you? All right. So point, appointment scripts and setting scripts right there. OK, so just making sure uh, uh, we go through that illustration right here. Very important that everybody understands this. This is our policy. This is actually my policy that I wrote with Security National back when I was 41. Uh, and I'm, for time's sake, I'm not going to drill down through it too much, but I want you to see something. I want you to have confidence in knowing that the policy you are providing for people, the service you're serving for people, and I want you to know, too, there's a big word in here. It's called serve. We want to be serving people. We don't want to just be selling breath, seller's breath all the time. We want to be serving people. But this is my policy, $20,000. Now, when I was 41, if you look at it closely, let me dissect it down a little bit. So 20 years from now, I will have spent, and where I get this number is from this, $410 a year times 20 years. So you got 20 years at $410 a year. So that's $8,100. Now, I will have at the end of that policy period, I will have $6,053 in cash value. What can I do with that? Well, I can take that cash and I can go to the casino, I can, whatever I want to do. I can cash it in, get my money. And, I, and then I have no policy. I give up my policy, but then I have the cash. Now, what did I pay for it? Remember, I paid $8,200 and I have $6,000 in cash, which means I paid overall net net. So we're having getting this number. I'm taking $8,200 minus $6,000. And I really paid $2,200 for this policy. $2,200 is all I paid. And I won't do the math. You know, we won't have to do the math now, but summary what it means is that right now at $410 a year, I'm paying about $35 a month. 
But at the end of 20 years, if I cash it out, I will have only paid $9. So just think about that. Now, again, over here, not to confuse you as a brand new agent, but this 12,366 represents a paid up benefit, which means this in summary. After 20 years, when I'm 61 years old, if I decide I don't want to pay any more premiums, I'm done paying premiums on this policy. I just want to have a paid up policy that's paid and I don't have to do anything with it. Then I can take a paid up policy of $12,366. Now, I will have paid $20,000. I will have it. I will have had $20,000 in coverage for those whole years over here. And now I can lock my policy in 12, 366 and never pay another dime. And remember, I only paid $8,200 for that. And we're actually paying four and a half percent interest rate on our policies. That's really good in the marketplace. Okay? So just look at this. I really suggest you write your own policy. You have your own illustration. You laminate it, you copy it, whatever, and you show people to, but you're willing to use mine also. It's right here on the website. If you have any questions about that later on, we can get together and we can talk and drill it down. But it is a true whole life that gathers all those things in cash value and anything else. All right. A couple more things down here. I'm going to skip over and then come back to on another call. Download your state apps. If you're in one of these states and you want a shortcut, you can go right here to my shortcut and do it. Other than that, if you need to order supplies, go over here to your marketing tab. And I want everybody to do this, every brand new person to go in here. And if you have problems, you call me and I'll walk through it with you. But you choose your language here, you know, English or Spanish and people that are on the line that want it. We have Spanish applications now. We have spent full Spanish applications that you can write with your people, for your people. And we have English right here, guys, okay, so we have our English, okay? So I'm gonna go in the state, pull up your state that you're in, in Texas and look at your applications and order you some, order you some applications, simple security plan, security care plan, MIB. Also, while we're in here, jump on your brochures. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go through it today, but if you look right here on my training website, if you notice weekly recordings, which I'm recording today, which I'll put on my site, but when you look right here on my YouTube channel, yeah, some of them are getting a little old now. I actually have one or two, you know, of them that are a year ago. But I've got the, you know, completing the web application, presenting the product, using a paper application, using your lead credit, branding yourself, okay? Whole life versus IUL, online application, okay? So a multitude of videos or trainings uh, that I've done uh, that are great to sit down and watch and maybe just learn from, grab a few tidbits okay, on these. So if you're looking for something specific, maybe jump, jump into here and drill into a category and sit back and, you know, maybe maybe you want to take a nap to it. I don't know. <laughs> so but jump in there and subscribe to my channel. You'll get the new ones that come out. I'll be posting these uh, probably this afternoon or tomorrow and they'll be on there. Um. Before we jump into the final deal, just know on brand new people uh, for, for brand new agents, we write, we write applications in person, you know, just like we talked about a paper application, what we're going to be talking about. And then once you write that policy in person, you're going to be going in here right here and taking your policy and uploading it into the upload button. So your upload button will be there for you to either scan it and upload or to take a picture of it with your phone. So if you have the agent portal um, on your uh, on your phone or pulled up, you can take a picture of it and send it straight to the company. Or again, you can scan it in and scan it into the system. Second way is to do it over the phone. Do it over the phone. If you're not with the client and you want to do it over the phone and or and or if you want to do a web application, if you're good on the computer and you'd rather type your information versus write it, you can do web app, it's right here, web app. Which means you can go in here, and I strongly suggest everyone on here homework-wise, go in here and practice. You can enter some bogus information here, or again, like we talked about, go ahead and write your own policy, protect yourself, your family, your kids, your aunts, all the people. They need coverage too, why not, why not be from us? Why not be from us, you know? It's a great policy for everybody. But go in there and practice a little bit, Make sure you know how to do it. It's just like the paper application you're about to see. 
uh, but go in there and play around and do it. It will help you out. That way, when you get into a pinch next time, you know how to do it real well. All right. So I'm going to go in here and kind of land on this one topic here uh, for just another 15 minutes or so. Underneath the applications, if you go in here again to the English version. Sorry, sorry, uh, Keelan, sorry to interrupt you, but um, uh, regarding the web applications, can you be and like a telesales agent exclusively or do you have to meet the customer in order to write the business? Okay, good question, good question, yeah. So, so let me find a blank page here a little bit or ish, kind of explain that to you. Maybe this will help out a little bit more. I know you get tired of looking at me, but I've got a blank page here maybe. I'll bring up a bear. Let me go over here to, um, go over here to the height and weight chart again. There we go, there's some blank. All right, so let me, let me draw this out for you real quick. Uh, so when you're in person, in person right here, so I'm sitting with Mr. and Mrs. Jones. I can do a paper application. And there's no phone interview needed. Or I can do the web application and then a phone interview or phone authorization is needed. Oh, they're having a hard time typing this one. Okay. Now, if I am over the phone, not in person, then I have to do the web application. And then the phone authorization. Okay, so two ways to do business here. Again, if I'm in person, I'm seeing the people. I can do a paper, simple paper application and send it to the company. Or if I'm better at typing, I think answering your question, you can do this web application here, type it into the computer. But regardless, in the case in point, you have to do the phone authorization on this one. On both of these, you have to do the phone authorization, especially if you're not in person. So if you're not in person, you cannot do the paper application. It has to be over the web. Did that answer your question? Sorry, yes, thank you. Okay, hopefully that answered everybody else's question. Just know that, yeah, if you're a good typer, you can go in here and, and sit with someone and enter the stuff into the computer. You just will have to at the end of the phone at the end of your writing it when you're over the phone you'll have to make a phone call see the phone verification number right there that is the home office number so write that number down also uh, on your files or actually maybe you want to save it in your phone that way you have it okay so it's very important so you gather your supplies when you do that good question though because uh, we get some of that all the time they want to take a picture of that depending on where you are at uh, but no pay. You can't do a paper application. If I'm talking to you like over the phone right now, I can't do a paper application because I can't see you. I don't know how much you weigh. I don't know, you know, what, what you look like. So that's when a phone authorization. And the phone authorization, the phone authorization when you call into the company is very short and sweet. Uh, is this this is Bill? This is Susie. Hey, how much do you weigh? Is this your address? Is this your stuff? You know, stuff. So if, if you're going to do a lot of web applications, you may want to go ahead and do a web application on yourself. Get used to the phone call. Uh, it's a very simple process. Just take a look at it. Anybody else have questions? Just go for it. So I want to go over here. Also, we talked about order supplies, but I want to go in here because I like this color coded, uh, simple, easy way to look at an application. And then we'll land here. So y'all bear with me just a little bit longer. So these, see these contract completion brochures, maybe I suggest you order a couple of those just to kind of get used to it. But what the company has done, which I really like, is they've, they've done these color-coded, uh, kind of dummy down, if you will, elementary uh, explanations of how to complete an application. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through this nauseum today, 
just because it, it takes a while to go through here. But I will show you, you know, on an application, everybody can fill out an application. We're all grown people here. Uh, you know, things that you see here, things that you see, uh, you've got your named insured. You've got the named insured. And if you look over to here to the left, should include name, gender, date of birth. It just kind of tells you what to do in this section. The owner, okay, you've got the owner and the payor. The owner can be a different person than the insurer. I can own Albert's. I can own Paul's policy if I want. We just have to sign for it later on. Payor, who's paying? Beneficiary, who's going to get the money? Primary or contingent. Green, okay, green section. is all of our payment stuff, okay? Are we preferred? Are we standard? Are we modified? Are we using EFT, which I strongly suggest everybody use EFT because if you're using debit cards and stuff and they get compromised, then you know, your uh, policy cancels. So typically uh, before we can get the payment money situated and straightened out. So always try to get EFT bank draft versus you know, debit card or credit card. Plus you as an agent get paid uh, advances on EFT. But if you have somebody that just has cash, just has money, you know, we can do this. We can do direct monthly bill. Uh, it's just kind of a pain a little bit just because uh, you got to go get money in a money order. Okay. And you've got to go get a cashier's check or money order. Now, face amount over here, obviously, you know, we're going to put the face amount in here, around 15,000. Okay. So 15,000, your premium, maybe, you know, $65, whatever. Remember, accidental death benefit rider, if I want to double that, I can put 15,000 more there, and then your child rider. Okay. Amount of premium, there won't be any premium unless, again, like I said, you're collecting money with a policy unless you're collecting money with the policy. The next line is, is pretty important part right here. Are you or are you not on social security? You know, which most people are. But if they are, you're going to do yes. If they aren't, do no. If they are, most of the time, then I got to change my highlight a little bit smaller if we can. Okay. If they are, then they're either on it for second, third, or fourth Wednesday. So we are a true social security billing company, which means we bill on exactly when they get paid. So it's either on second or third. So this is a really a two part question. Number one, we're going to ask the client, do you have the money in the bank? Do you want it to go effective today? For example, today is, we see down here at the bottom, the sixth of the month. So we're on the sixth of the month. If I write a policy today and I say, yes, I want it drafted immediately. I want it taken care of today. Then I'm going to draft immediately. Yes. Okay. I've got the money. It's going to go into the company and go effective and immediately when I say go on marks it go. Now, if they don't have the money now, you know, if you don't have the money right there, I might go, uh oh, they don't have the money right there. I don't want it to go effective immediately because they won't have the money till next month. And I can do no. And then I can put what date, maybe they'll have money. So, oh, I'll get my, I get paid on the 15th, but then I put the 15th there. I have a draft upon approval, no here, and then we got the 15th. Right, so just know whether they have the money or not. We can always post date the, the policy for up to 30 days. I mean, I could even I could even erase this. I could even do this. And I could even go in and put the fifth of next month, and this policy would not go effective until the fifth of June. So just know when you're asking the people question. Do you have the money now? Do you want it to go effective now? Or do you want to wait? Or do you want to make it effective now? And then when does your next draft date? When do you want your next draft date? Okay. So two-part question there. Let me see if I got any more questions on that. Uh, yep, that's good. Uh, do you, are you replacing or not? I typically put no here because I rarely replace or see anybody replace policies. If you do and you, you're just adamant about replacing a policy from another company, by law, you do have to fill out a replacement form. But this question is not just saying, do you have any life insurance or do you have any life insurance policy? It's basically saying, are you replacing? Are you replacing? Uh, proposed physician name, you don't have to have that. We won't use it. The only time we would ever use it if they were to pass away in the first two years, which we, just like any other life insurance company in the world, 
have a two free a free two year window look back period uh, that we can use. So that's the only time we would do that if need to be. All right, we're going on down. So this is remember when I was talking about you know standard Steve and and preferred Paul modified Mo. This is our knockout question. So if any of these are answered, I'm gonna do yeah, I'll do red. Make make sense. If any of these are answered, yes, then we're not eligible. The client's not eligible. Okay, so let me just highlight. You can read them yourself, but I want to kind of show you uh, some of the some of the ways to summarize this. Some of the ways to ask people questions. You know, Colton's like, how can we ask people questions in the field to see if they qualify? So, Mr. Jones, in the past thirty days, have you been in the hospital? No. Nope. Mr. Jones, in the last 30 days, have you had a seizure? No. Mr. Jones, do you need assistance or help with eating, bathing, or trans, trans to and transferring to or from a chair? No. Mr. Jones, have you, are you, do you currently have internal cancer? No. Mr. Jones, Alzheimer's, ALS, hep, hepatitis C, or organ transplant? No. Are you currently receiving dialysis? No. And have you been diagnosed with HIV? No. As long as those are all, and we can clearly go over here and say, nope, 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 then we are good to go to the next section. Good to go to the next session, section. So just look at those. So you'll get used to that when you're out in the field. Hey, are you in the hospital? Have you had any seizures, any Alzheimer's, uh, hepatitis C, dialysis, HIV, uh, seizures? And they're like, no, 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 no. Okay, cool. So remember now we're going to go down to, if I can minimize this out and find my page two, I just went past it. All right. So we've got page two right here. And remember standard Steve, here's standard Steve, old Steve, standard Steve right here. Remember diabetes, insulin. So we've got diabetes and insulin. And then how many units do you take? Remember it has to be less than hundred. Well, I take 60. Okay then you are standard policy and you are standard Steve, okay? That's what it means. That's all it means is in section two, is this Steve diabetic or not? If he's not, then heck no, we're going on to no, and then we can erase that, and we are good to go and see if if he qualifies for, oh, I'm going to come on eraser. Okay. Well, anyways, qualifies for the modified plan. So this is probably the most important section of the whole application. As long as you get these two sections right, you're pretty much good, okay? Because what we're really looking for here in the modified section, as you can see the modified section, uh, maybe I'll change blue, it'd be easier to see in the modified, okay? So basically you can have three of these questions answered yes and still get a modified plan. You can have three yeses and still get a modified plan. So let's look at this and make sure my questions are good. Okay, right here. I've only lost two people. <laughs> and, uh, give me another five minutes. I promise I'll have you off here. Five minutes, All right? Within the past two years, has the proposed had any of these things? But also within the past two years, has the proposed been prescribed medicines for? Okay, so look at that one really quickly. Let me give you an example. Let's say somebody had a stent put in eight years ago but they're still on blood thinners, but they're still on blood thinners. But when we talk about blood thinners, I, I don't want to confuse things, but I want to show you real quick on blood thinners. If you go over here, just a little secret, if you go over here to the rate book and underwriting and you go to the very last page. Let me back my bad. Let me back up here. It's a Friday. You go to your medication list. <laughs> you go to your medications list and you look at blood thinners right here. Okay. You will see that we do take some, we do take some blood thinners on modified. Okay. So if you're taking these blood thinners right here, and if you're not a diabetic, if you're not a diabetic, okay. If you're taking these blood thinners and you're not diabetic, you can get preferred policy. You can actually put no on that question. But if you're taking these blood thinners right here, then it would be a yes. So I don't want you to think there's a bunch of one-offs with us. There's only about two. This is one of them. 
But if you if you're talking about somebody, you know, uh, you may want to think about that and say, hey, how is um, you know, how's your heart? How's things beating? How's the little ticker? Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to minimize this again, and I'm going to draw maybe a little man stick man again and uh, just because i like drawing and i think it makes sense for me and maybe it will make sense for you so i've got a stick man or woman whatever it may be right here person and i want to kind of think about this hello my name is person okay um with the questions i don't know if you can see those over on the left because it's kind of small but i'm going to kind of help you out in the past two years question number nine okay so in the past two years question number nine says over there and you can read it 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so let's do this. So in the past two years, have you had anything? Angioplasty, stent, bypass, heart valve surgery, or pacemaker? Okay, so this is my Steve's little heart right here, if you can tell. Heart. Okay. So number nine is asking about his heart. Anything wrong with your heart, Steve? No, all good. Number 10, remember the cancer question right here. If they've been cancer free for two years, then they can go preferred. But if they've been cancer free for 90 days, we can do a yes right here and get Mr. Stick figure a modified plan, Mr. Stick, Stick man. Okay, so number 11. Okay, so brain tumors or disorders. So brain, stick man has a noggin up here. So number 11 has to do with his noggin, his brain. Anything wrong with your brain? Number 12, again, is on heart disease. Heart disease of any type, angina, heart attack, congestive heart failure. So 12 is about the heart. So if we know a lot of things about the heart and the lungs, we know a lot of things about this person. Number 13, lung diseases. Okay, so you've got two lungs here. These are two lungs. Okay, so 13, <laughs> I always hate evaluating my drawings. Uh, so our lungs right here. Number 14, kidney diseases, liver diseases, pancreas. Okay, so those are gonna be in, in this is his lower back. Okay, so that's number 14 there. Okay, a pancreas, liver disease, any of those things. Uh, 15, remember diabetes. So again, I know it's small, I apologize, but if you've got diabetics, over 100 units, that's going to be a yes. One thing to watch out for here, neuropathy. Neuropathy is a drug, and they use the word, the drug's name is gabapentin. Okay. And this is a dual purpose medicine. Mainly, it's used for diabetic neuropathy, but sometimes it can be used sometimes for nerve pain. And in that nerve pain situation, maybe somebody had an accident or whatever it may be. So just know that because nerve pain, if nerve pain is in here, it can actually be preferred. But if it's gabapentin for, for uh, neuropathy, it's going to be modified. Okay. So just know that kind of a double, double edged sword there on that one. Uh, 16, Parkinson's disease. Uh, uh, Parkinson's right here. Uh, down syndrome, muscular epilepsy, seizures. So that's kind of a neuro neurological, uh, you know, disease that so may be back up in the noggin also. 18, have you been advised to have a surgery that you haven't had? 19, have you been to drug or alcohol rehab? And number 20, do you use a wheelchair or oxygen? Or 20 is just a kind of a, a medical advice, medical device. This is, this is a wheelchair. But anyways, 20 is those things. We're actually one of the few companies that will actually uh, right people on oxygen. So that's a good thing there. Okay. Right people on oxygen. So again, let's look at Mr. Stick figure and, you know, back to, I think Colton's, you know, a question and everybody's question is if I'm just out talking to someone and we're sitting there, I don't know, just hanging out or talking or whatever, having a beer, whatever they do church. Um, and they say, you know, and we're talking to them. Hey, are you covered? What do you do? And you know, that's important to do. It's a important question. Why are you in the business? Why do you provide the service? And what do you do? I'm passionate about it. I want to help as many families as I can. I don't want to just go sell auto insurance or car insurance or home insurance. Or... I want to protect families. I want my legacy. What is your legacy? 
want my legacy to be known how many people that I protect and how many people my people protect. How many, how big a footprint did we make on this world when we're dead and gone? Because remember, 77, age 77 is it. 77 right here. That's the average age of death in the United States of America, 77. So half the people in your phone, half the people you know are gonna die before 77. So if you make it to 77, half the people you know are gonna be dead. And it's just the way it is. Half of them are gonna live the rest of it. Okay, so how many of those 77, if you've got, if you've got 2000 people in your phone or you know 2000 people, a thousand will be gone. How many policies did you write? Did you write those people? Did you cover them? Okay. So I'm just passionate about that. But if I'm looking at somebody, I'm going to say, hey, Bill, how's your head? You got anything wrong with your brain? Hey, how's your heart? Anything wrong with your heart? How's your lungs? They all good. How's kidneys and livers and everything? They all good. Uh, any cancers, any HIV, anything, you know, anything? Nope, nope, nope. All good. I know I do have some high cholesterol. Okay, preferred. Remember? Oh, I got uh, 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 blood pressure too. Okay, preferred. Other than that, anything? No. So just think about it maybe in people terms when you're thinking about the application. Uh, you know, what does it look like on a person? What does a person look like? And how does it, how does that correlate for you? Okay, it just helps me out. Think about instead of trying to memorize the questions on the application, I'm trying to talk to a person like a doctor and go, hey, this is your daily checkup. Anything wrong with you? You know, your doctor, anything been bothering you? Anything going on? Tell me about yourself. So that's what we need to do to make people feel comfortable. And then, of course, we are like Jerry Maguire, show me your money. OK, we are the show me your medicines. And back to the question, this is where if they don't show it to you and it shows up, you may have them rated incorrectly. And it may be you may lose the deal, depending on how the premium goes. It's very important to know it up front, because if they don't tell you and you rate them preferred and then it comes back modified and the rate is twenty five dollars higher, you have a very small chance of, of keeping that policy because they're already thinking it's going to be $45 and now you're going up to 65 and it's just hard. So we better, it's easier to find out up front so that we can tell them. So here's where you put your medicines. Um, let me go a little bit, is that my smallest? Okay. So let's just say we've got amlodipine, uh, which is a blood pressure pill. You put amlodipine. Okay. And then we're going to do a warfarin just for blood thinners. So I want to show you. So the dosage, I may go right here, 10 milligrams, uh, and I may go 20 milligrams. Okay. In the duration box, this is really how long have they been taking it? Okay, how long have they been taking it? Duration box over here. They've been taking it for two years or 10 years. Okay, you got that. And then your medical condition. So amlodipine is high blood pressure, high blood pressure. Warfarin is blood thinners, okay, blood thinners. Now, here's the other thing. So some of these medicines will correlate with the questions and some of them won't. So if you've got high blood pressure, it does not correlate to one of these questions. So I'm just going to put not applicable. Blood thinner does correlate to a question up here, which is heart valve or heart problems. That's question number nine, okay? So just look at that from that helicopter approach, you know, be sure you get all these because that's what their company's looking for. That's what the company is looking for. Children information, again, if you want to put children on here, that's where the children can go in that rider. You can take a look at that. Uh, and then finishing up the application, you're going to put the names, socials up here. The city where it was, the city where the client is. So if you're doing a web application, someone's in, I'm from here and they're in Houston. I'll put Houston, Texas in there. Okay. And then the date, you can do that. And then right here, be sure you look at the printed name right here, printed name of the applicant and the signature of the applicant. And then if the owner is a different owner, you're going to need their signature here and then date it, date it, date it. Good to go. Are you or are you not writing a policy on your family? Remember, you can insure your family too. You get full commissions on it. You just don't get advanced commissions. You get daily, but yes or no here. And then am I replacing or not? Will not replace a policy. Sign your name, print your name, your agent number. Again, remember, if you're on the web, 
and you want to do a web application, it's exactly the same. It's just you're only you're using your voice to sign versus your pen to sign. Okay, and then we go over here to the last page. Uh, pay attention to this one right here. When the company put this policy together, uh, they kind of messed up a little bit, but the payor name is always the same as the customer name. So let's say I'm buying a policy for myself. You know, I would put Keelan here and I would put Keelan here if I'm paying for it. And then Keelan would sign down here underneath the signature. Now, this portion right here is the name, which is the name of the applicant right here, okay? Which up here, this is the name. Oh, I can't see that name, put my color different. Hold on one second. This is the name. Name, eh, come on. Name of payor. Now, sometimes it may be the same person. Sometimes it be, the the agent or the, I mean, the insured is the same person. Name of payor. I know that's kind of hard to see some reason those colors, but name of the payer. Okay. And this is also the signature of payor. If you're doing a web application, how do you get the signature? Just by their voice. Yeah. And it's gotcha. actually the voice. The, the reason we do the authorization at the end is just for that purpose. Do you agree to this? Do you agree to this? And do you agree to this? It's just okay. a typed in deal. Yeah. Typed and voiced. Good question. Um, and then right here, conditional receipt. You can put received from Keelan, uh, you know, on this day, blah, 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 one, blah, 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 blah. Some of what I usually do is if I, if it's a, like a bank draft or whatever, 67, 66, I usually come down here in this one right here and I just get um, uh, draft immediately, immediate. And then I put over here, then I put their date that their other draft is on fifth or whatever. Just tell whatever you want to type in there, whatever you want to draw, whatever you want to write in there, just to let the client know, hey, I got the money now and your, your next payments are going to be coming out on this. And then right here is just your signature and then uh, your name right here. Now, what I usually do is just, I tear this off old school, old fashioned, bend it, bend it a couple of times, you know, you know, the old school used to lick it, you know, <laughs> I don't know if that's, if that's sanitary these days to do, but you know, whatever, tear that off, tear that off right there. And then you've got basically this thing you can leave it with, with the client if you want to. And uh, with with the presentation and with the funeral planning fact sheet, okay. And then that's it on the application, okay. And that's it. But we we'll go in here, maybe and order you a couple of these um, uh, these application brochures. You may want to go in there and order you uh, uh, the security care plan one too, and take a look at it, and and uh, just complete one of those. You know, complete it, take a look at it, and practice on it, and practice on it. All right, so I think I answered most all those three, four questions there in about an hour and uh, about 20 minutes. So anyways, that's good, that's good. I use it, it usually takes me a little longer. So let me let me reverse back to the back and let me summarize this and then we'll, we'll be out. I care about every single one of you and I want you to be successful. And I want you to, to, to you know, to be, be successful, as big as you want, whether you want to write 35 apps a week or a month or whatever, or whether it's three or two. I just ask that you use us. I just ask passionately that you look around and, and say, hey, who can I protect? Who can I, who can I love on? Who can I serve? Who needs this? Because it's not a matter of if this is going to happen to people. It's when it happens to people. And I want you to be able to hang your hat on the front pew of, a, you know, that funeral home or the church and go, hey, I'm your... I'm your final expense guy. I'm the person that protected the family. I'm the one that had the courage to go ask whether I was shut down or not, whether you had protection. I'm the one that wanted to wear the blue shirt. I'm the one that the SNL guy, I am that person. So be somebody, I challenge you to be somebody and I wanna help you with that. I know for a fact, I've been in the insurance business with my PNC, my 66324, all those things. I know for a fact, and I'm not just saying this because I want you to, to, you know, write with SNL and make us all rich or who, whatever, you know, or be, you know, glory. But I know for a fact is that this is a great product. This is a great company. I've been 22 years and, and it is a good one. There's other great companies out there. I'm not telling you we are the number one and the only one, but we are one of them. And this is a great product for people, for people in the middle of low income family ranges, 
that, um, it, you know, that this is important to them. This is very important, especially since the COVID. They are looking for someone to trust. They're looking for someone to, to tell them the truth. They're looking for someone to bring this to them and, and show it to them versus just buying it off the TV. They want you to be their agent. They want to trust in you. They want your phone number. They want your business card. They want to be able to come to you because it's important to them that when that day comes for their family, that you are, you are the agent, you are the man, you are the woman, and they trust you with that. So I challenge you to do that, you know, in the next week or two or whenever, you know, it's, uh, it's very important that we, that we protect, you know, everybody. So also Sunday, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there that are, you know, there. And also men, don't forget your mothers and, and, uh, and family. They're very important. They're the lifeline and the blood. So uh, couldn't do it without them. So um, happy Mother's Day. Thank you for joining in today. Again, do not be afraid. Call, text, email me. It's what I'm for. It's what I do. It's what I get paid for. I want to help you in any way. Okay. So thank you for jumping on here. I jump on in my, my Facebook, join that, my YouTubes, get you some resources, anything personal you want to, as far as training goes, you want to holler at me about, give me a ring. I'll be here. So uh, have a great Friday afternoon and a great Mother's Day weekend. And let's go find a couple of people to talk to and protect and love on. So have a great day. Have a great weekend. And as I always say in Texas is adios. Thanks, Keenan. Bye. Thank you all.